Good afternoon. Welcome to another Estimate Rocket success webinar. I'm Tom Dros, co-founder of Estimate Rocket, a powerful software tool that you can access from anywhere to estimate, follow up, manage clients, projects, and schedules. Your whole team's connected to one platform that keeps customers happy and gets you home for dinner. Today's guest presenter is Tom Reber. Tom is a Marine veteran, the host of the Contractor Fight podcast, and co-founder of the Contractor Sales Academy. He's also owned a successful residential painting company outside of Chicago, creating millions in revenue. Now he's in charge of kicking contractors in the ass for bigger and greater success. Today's webinar is titled How to Find, Mentor, and Create Winning Employees. Tom's going to guide you through the process of building. Today you'll learn three little known strategies to equip you and attract and to attract and retain the top performing employees for your contracting business. If you have questions during the webinar, I encourage you to type them in the question box on your screen in the control panel. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and posted for viewing again and sharing with your team members. Now I'd like to, again, Tom, thanks for being here today and uh, I'm looking forward to your pre presentation as always and uh, with that I will turn it over to you. Thanks Tom, it's good to be here again. Um, appreciate everybody jumping on here, taking time from their day to uh, dig into this topic here today. Um, my goal here today is to give you as much as I can in a time frame that doesn't infringe on your day. So there's not a lot of fluff in this. There's uh, We're going to get right to the point and dig in. Before we do that, I would love for you guys to just post in the chat, um, what trade are you in and where are you at? I just like to know who's here. Um, that way I can, uh, um, sometimes when I use examples or you know, things like that, I can make it more trade specific. So I would love to see, uh, if nothing else, what trade you guys are all working in. So what do you, what do you got for me there? Sometimes they're driving so they can't. Uh, yeah, they might have to look up an right. I know we have at least one painter, <laughs> two at uh, least. Well, good deal. So. Let's, um, while, while I'm waiting on any of that to come in, let's go ahead and just uh, dig in. And let's look at the situation here, guys, that we have going on in our, in our country. We're currently hovering around a 4% unemployment rate. And, you know, that's good news, but the bad news for the, the trades and things like that is that it's just harder to find people because a lot of people are already working. And we, we know that people have jobs and this and that. We've also... Um, had about a four decade push for people to go to college. And, and I'm, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. I, I'm, I'm going to be 50 in a couple weeks here. And for most of my life, all I've heard is that the trades are a good backup plan, uh, not a real viable option if you want to have a great career, make great money and all that other stuff. And so the message that people have been hearing, especially younger people, um, has been, you know, the, the trades just aren't, you know, what you want, what you want for your life and things like that. So we're, we're combating that. And, and guys, listen, we're also combating the perception that people have of contractors. And so, listen, if you are watching this live right now listening to this live, I would love for you, seriously, I'm a, I'm a very interactive guy. I love to have a lot of give and take uh, with, the, with the attendees to this in the chat box. So um, what, you know, so hopefully you guys are, you're able to do this and I'll, I'll give it 15, 20 seconds, sometime there's delay, but what are some of the perceptions that you believe people have about the trades? And in the meantime, Tom, have you seen anybody type in what their trade is or just the one painter? Uh, not yet, but uh, not yet. I've been doing some looking up while uh, in case they are all driving. And uh, we have at least uh, three painters and uh, one builder and one I'm not sure. All right, <laughs> well, there you go. Our user yet. <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, anybody that's heard me before live or on one of these, Tom, they know I'm an interactive guy. And so I feed off your energy, off your comments and things like that um, in the event that you're not able to comment or anything like that. I totally get it. But guys, listen, we have this perception in the, in the construction industry, in the trades that, like I said, that it's a good plan B. Uh, if you can't find like quote unquote a real job, um, for the most part, people look at it as hard work. Um, sometimes it's dangerous work. 
Uh, it might be monotonous work. It might be work that doesn't pay a lot. There is a perception out there in so many different ways of how people look at the trades. And quite frankly, I think it's two main reasons. I think the first reason um, right out of the gate is um, the, the evidence, or I'm sorry, the, the, the 40 year college push that we've, we've put out there that I've already talked about. The second reason is the evidence when people look at the average contractor. The average home improvement contractor um, makes between fifty and sixty thousand dollars a year. He's tired. He's working all the time. Uh, he has a hard time. He, most of them don't have a retirement plan. Most of them uh, are feast and famine. Most of them, you know, they come home tired, dirty, and they don't have a lot to show for it in their bank account. And and that was my case. In fact, I did everything I could. Uh, growing up to not work in the trades and I'm you know it's uh, you know I had an uncle that was a painting contractor I have my dad was a tile guy my grandfather was a painter I had uncles that were um, that, that worked in uh, they were deck builders and everything home builders everything, you name it plumbers uh, all the guys that I knew in my life uh, were tired dirty didn't have a great uh, work-life balance, if you want to call it that, feast or famine. Uh, the conversation around it was always uh, griping and complaining about not having money or they owe a lot of money on taxes. And uh, I, I used to watch them wait outside. My uncle, I used to watch him wait. Uh, if the builder was out of town that he was doing work for and he needed the check, um, like he was broke. It was just check to check. And that's the perception, you guys. A lot of this is like, Oh, it's a lot of hard work for not a lot of money, and I'm tired and I'm dirty all the time. That is the an overview of the current situation that we have. And so we have to understand these things, that this situation that we face, this is the message that's been sent out. And so if we want, we want first and foremost, to find people to come work in our business, because I know, hands down, this is pretty much the number one issue I hear uh, you know, from at least one of the top two issues I hear from every contractor that, that we work with in our programs and things like that. It's, um, you know, man, I have plenty of work. I'm a good salesperson. I'm selling it, you know, 50% gross profit or better. So I'm, you know, I'm kicking butt with the money. My problem is I can't get to the work quick enough. So some of the things that we're going to talk about today, I'm going to spend a lot of time on, on finding and mentoring. And there's um, what we need to understand is this is a great opportunity for us because um, because of this the current situation that we already know. Great opportunity for us to position ourselves and our companies as the kick-ass companies in the area and stuff like that. So two things that this is going to require, though. The first thing it's going to require, and we talk about this all the time. I talk about it on my YouTube Contractor Fight TV. I talk about my podcast. Um, every time I'm in front of a group of people, this con this conversation comes up where if, if I could beat it over everybody's head, you have to be committed to making money. If you do not make money, if you are not, if you don't know your numbers, if you're not disciplined in some things like that, um, you are going to have a hard time implementing some of the things we're talking about here because money solves a lot of your problems. So, for instance, if you know, I just got off a coaching call with one of our clients. He just sold a one point three million dollar job, and he's ecstatic about it because that is going to give him some cash flow and some money and the profit. He's going to walk away with about thirty five, forty percent on that, and it's enabling him to implement some of the things that um, he needs to do in his business from a cultural point of view and a personnel point of view and things like that. So, guys, I'm not going to go hard on the money here, but uh, you have to be committed to money, making money. It's not wrong to make as much money as you possibly can. So get all that head trash out of your brain. Uh, everything that we talk about here, building a team, recruiting a team, keeping a team, all that stuff will be easier if you are a highly profitable company with money in the bank. Um, sorry, I took a drink there. So the, the other thing here that these things do for us is – this, I want to camp on this perception thing. One of the biggest reasons that people do not go into the trades 
is the perception and that's on us. Um, and it's on us for many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is that we fail to understand that our number one job uh, when we own a business is to market and sell the business, or market and sell, and it's to build a brand. If you're just trying to, you know, make a living, then you have the right mind, or you have the wrong mindset. What I hope that you have is a mindset of I'm going to go out there and crush it, and I'm going to build an empire because that changes the game for you and the way you approach everything. So everything that I'm talking about today, getting some strategies and stuff, um, they're gonna require some effort. They're going to, some of them are gonna require a little bit of money, but most importantly, they're gonna require you having the right mindset around building a team. So I wanna get in here to this real quick. So the first is, you have to have the mindset that you are on the attack. And don't wait for things to happen to you, but instead be the one who's on offense. You're the one who's trying to put the ball in the, in the end zone. And just a couple things that we could do to, to combat this perception is have this attack mindset. If you think about what younger people are um, comparing us to, it's companies like Google and Starbucks and the cool tech companies and all these things. Guys, if you're not featuring cool stuff, and you define cool any way you want, but I encourage you to go look at like, um, you know, Chris Berry, he's the Idaho painter, Paint Life TV. If you look at him on Instagram, I don't know, he's got 130,000 followers, um, gets a lot of high engagement. One of my next slides is going to give you a snapshot of what his Instagram feed looks like. But he's, sh he's showing uh, cool videos and drone shots and things like that and videos of instead of a guy painting with a brush, the guy's painting with a sprayer. Um, Stan Genetic, he's called the Dirt Monkey. He's built, uh, he features a lot of cool stuff, does tool reviews and machinery and things like that. He's in the landscape industry. Um, we have to make our industry, whatever it might be, attractive, okay? Um, another way we can be on the attack is to really be dialed in and have a clear uh, career path mapped out for people. And then finally, share how they get to use their brains. Uh, and solve problems that it, you you know you don't have you're not an idiot if you're a contractor. I know Tom, you said we got a couple builders on here and stuff like that. Yeah. You know some of the things that that you got to plan and coordinate and pull together as a builder, just from the soft skills in life, communication and and um, and mentoring people and leadership and those things. These are things that I encourage you to show and make part of your brand building efforts. Now, you probably also noticed that I've talked a lot here about brand building. I've talked a lot already about Instagram and stuff like that. Um, the days of just running an ad on the, on the job sites and people flocking to you are over. Now, they might be flocking to you, but they're, <clears throat> they're not the right people. They don't have the right mindset and some things like that. So um, I'm a big fan of using social media to to hire, to recruit, to poach, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, if you are not in 2019, okay, with the times, um, you know, building your brand through social media, you are absolutely, um, it's just a matter of time before your business folds because this is a marathon, you guys, and those with the biggest, who get the most eyeballs, the most attention and things like that are the ones that win. I want you to think of the companies I mentioned before. You got Apple, you got Google, you got Starbucks. Okay, those companies, they do not have a hard time hiring people because every time you turn around in a community, you see a Starbucks. People want to work there. They're known for their culture, their reputation, and some things like that. We have an opportunity to show these things um, with uh, through social media virtually for free. So real quick, I'm going to do something here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do, and um, and I'm going to see if I can pull this off here with my camera. Do you see me on the camera, Tom? I do. All right, there we go. So I'm in my office here, you guys. And the reason I'm going to my camera right now is because I want to point at you and look you in the eye when I tell you the thing I'm about to tell you. All right, guys. I don't even have a slide for this because I wanted to do this. All right, I'm not a big slide guy. So don't don't expect a bunch of fancy crap from my slides. Take the time, take the time 
to create a list of non-negotiables of what it takes for somebody to be a part of your team. Too many times, and I've, I've been consulted by, I mean, I've worked with consultants myself, I've been coached by you know people that have incredible businesses and things like that, and through many years, I've learned some lessons here. And one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we hire people because they know how to hang crown molding, but they don't, uh, but you never took the time to develop some non-negotiables of the type of people that could work in your company. And you know, the old saying is hire for character, not for skill and all that stuff. I get it that we need to have the skill. That that goes without saying. But if you have the skill and the wrong character and, and you you don't have some clear non-negotiables, you're gonna have a really hard time attracting and keeping people. And so I'll give you some examples here um, from, from some companies that have some non-negotiables. Um, one of mine in, in my business and other businesses I own and that I'm partners in, one of mine, and it will always be this, is um, you, it's positive people, the way we write it is positive peeps only, positive people only. If you are not a positive human being, I do not want you around me ever, okay? It's that simple. The, it, life is tough enough, business is tough enough without, have, have an, without inviting people into my company who don't have a naturally positive demeanor. Doesn't mean you're always in a good mood. Doesn't mean that everything's always, um, you know, sunshine and rainbows, but it means for the most part, the way they see the world, the way they see their workday, their, their, their coworkers and you and all those other things is the glass is always half full, it's never half empty. Okay, that's first and foremost. Second one, and while I'm talking about this thing, if you guys have access to the chat box, go ahead and type in what a couple of your non-negotiables might be, because like I said at the top, this is freaking interactive, okay? Uh, one of my other ones is you have to be massively competitive and have a monster work ethic. Why? Because those things are me. Those are me. I'm just going to say it like it is. I do not like people that ha don't have a monster work ethic. doesn't mean you work 20 hours a day. It just means when you're working, you're like you're a workhorse. In the trades, this is big. In fact, I, I was talking to somebody this morning. And, um, and and he said to me, the way to his heart is work ethic, okay? And, it's, I, and I can resonate with that. So I have to have people that, that like to work. And I don't care what the work is. It could be working in the weight room. It could be practicing guitar. It could be whatever. Um, they have to have that, that monster work ethic. Next thing is going to be being massively competitive, okay? I hate to lose and I only want to be around winners, okay? Winners, when you have a team of winners, you will accomplish way more than you will when you have a team of just a bunch of, you know, you know whatever. Um, another one that somebody had uh, down is a non-negotiable that I thought was good, and I encourage you to be creative in this stuff, you know, in the way that you communicate it to your team. Uh, he says, we always go to 11. And so for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, there was a movie a million years ago called This Is Spinal Tap. It was a fake rock and roll documentary. And this guy had this amplifier and the film crew was in there. And, um, and he's like, hey, tell me about this amp. And he's like, oh, I designed it myself. He's got a British accent, right? And, and he's like, what's unique about this amp is that it goes to 11. Okay, most amps, amplifiers go to 10. Everything goes to 10. He made his to go to 11. And because um, he wanted that extra push. And so that is a long range approach that this company takes is that we always go to 11 for people. So when you're interviewing people, when you're meeting people, when you're seeing a, a, a server in a restaurant or you get really good service at a car dealership with the dudes that are checking you in or whatever, strike up a conversation. When you see people with these non-negotiables, hand them a business card, you never know. But guys, when, you, when you're not clear, here's the biggest reason that I'm talking about these non-negotiables. You should have three to five of them somewhere in there that are you because you're the company. And if you surround yourself with a bunch of people that don't have some of those same values that you have, you're going to have a really hard time being patient, mentoring them, um, sticking with them. They're going to have a hard time connecting with you and you're just making it 
harder than it needs to be. So the non-negotiable thing um, is non-negotiable in my in my book. All right. So, man, Tom, these guys are quiet today, man. Yeah, Jeff, actually, actually, Mitch, Mitch came in with a uh, with uh, integrity, honesty, show up, and truthful. There you go. Key elements. So, so let's take one of those. So if if uh, if Mitch is going to talk to somebody and interview somebody, design your questions. You know, like, hey, not don't say, do you have integrity? Of course, they're going to say yes. But say, hey, can you share with me an example of uh, a time that you were on a job site and in your integrity, you were at a you were at a crossroads between, you know, having integrity and not having integrity. That'd be an example. Or um, can you give me an example of a time in your in one of your past jobs in the past year or two where you went to 11 if we're going to talk about that um, or maybe personal development. This is in my business. What's really important to me, the people that work for me uh, and guys, guys and gals in my team and my company here. Um, our big thing is I, I don't want to be with people that aren't into personal development. I always want you to be growing. So one of the questions that we ask is, hey, give me an example of how you've made yourself a better human being in the last three months. All right. And if they're like struggling, then chances are they're not the type of person that invests them in themselves and all that other stuff. So hopefully you guys get the point here of what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so let me go back to the uh, screen here if it allows me to. Um, do you have my screen, Tom? Uh, I see your desktop with nothing on it. Now we got it. All right, now you got it. All right, cool. So hopefully guys, this makes sense, but this is, you have to have these non-negotiables. Um, otherwise, it's you're just gonna start bringing in people that you're gonna have a harder time um, connecting with, resonating with, and this and that. Um, so, first thing I want to talk about is build the brand, build the culture, okay, and then brag. So, I, I use two painter examples here because these are buddies of mine. Uh, the company on the left is is um, you know Chris Berry. He's the Idaho painter. That's his Instagram feed, um, and you'll see he's he's doing cool stuff with equipment. He's you know, playing with sanding tools. And I just took a, the first snapshot I found here. He's doing videos of how they're approaching a problem and this and that. Um, hey, how does this tool work and some things like that. And guys, that is going to pique the interest of people that have um, a propensity to want to work in the trades. They're going to care about some of those things. All right. It makes it interesting. Shows them at the gym and some things like that. And a lot of you right now are going, I'm not crossing my personal life, my business life. And I was, okay. Well, then you're, you're freaking blowing an opportunity because you, you're looking to hire people, not machines. And you want to hire people that are going to be into the things that you're into with your company. All right. He's massively consistent here. Um, he has obviously a painting company up in Idaho and his YouTube and his Instagram um, are the biggest lead source for his business and for employees because the more visible you are, you don't have to go hunting for people. They're going to find you. And that is that is absolutely huge. And so uh, let me throw this out there. How many of you right now do at least three posts a day on social media? Just give me a yes or no, and Tom will give me the results here in a minute. If you're not doing three posts a day, you're, you're probably going, what, is, what the hell does this have to do with hiring? Okay, it says everything to do with hiring. Because people, you want people to know who you are. You want to do hashtags and and run ads to people that have certain interests that that are um, consistent with your industry because they might not need a job now but six months from now because you've been in front of their face and you branded the shit out of your business all right they're gonna know exactly who they're gonna call right away and so building your brand is having a strong company identity you know it's investing in your vehicle wraps all these things that we normally look at as like quote unquote, advertising and marketing for clients just as much are, are there to be a magnet for people to come work for you. So um, there's safety in a brand, okay? That's something I learned many, many years ago from, from somebody I, I hired as a marketing coach for me and it was one of the first things he said to me. He says, you know, you go to a foreign country, you don't know where to eat, you see the golden arches, what do you do? You go into freaking McDonald's because there's safety in a brand and it's no different. When your trucks are on the road, when there's billboards, when there's yard signs, when your employees are you know, wearing 
you know, cool company shirts or maybe, uh, you, you know, you're doing all this stuff on social media and this and that, it increases your chances of people knowing who you are and when the time comes, when their current employer slows down or doesn't give them the raise that they were promised or whatever the other crap is out there, I guarantee you they are going to pick the phone up, they're going to stop in your office, or they're going to send you a message. All right, the company on the right is Josh Abramson, Albright Painting out in California. One of the, and Josh, I think, I don't know, he's got probably 70 painters in the field or something like that. The culture that he builds there is around happiness okay and this does two things every I mean look at these pictures this is from their website if you go to their Instagram and things like that you will see very similar pictures people are smiling they're having fun they're throwing parties okay um, let me just pull up a quick uh, you still have my uh, thing there right Tom yep all right so you know if I go to Albright painting you know, right, I'm just going to show you guys live here real quick. Go to his website. Okay, he invests in the culture of his business. Who wouldn't want to work for a company, okay, that is having fun like this? What you need is value, reliability. What you find is a bit overwhelming. They all talk of how they're the best in town with competitive pricing. So you choose an option at random and get in contact. They're treating this like a business, guys, not just some painting it's business that's work. running out of your shed in the backyard. Finding a painting contractor it's has become relevant. significantly harder than you thought. It's with the times. And that's when you see it. Painting happiness. Painting what? Painting happiness. The slogan of all bright painting. So you look them up. You think to yourself, I deserve to be happy, and give them a call. You set up a meeting, and things just start to look a little brighter. At Albright, we guide you step by step through the process. Albright is all about making sure you feel like. Okay, now you go to their career page, and I'll be quick on this. All right, That's brilliant, <laughs> guys. This is the message. This is about a brand. This is the culture of their company, and yet most of you are going to be too damn lazy and too cheap to do stuff like this, and you're going to continue to struggle. Why do I paint happiness? Ah. Oh man. Why do I paint happiness? That's a tough question. The reason I paint happiness? Because it taught me everything I know in the past 10 years that I worked here. From apprentice all the way to management. You just treat me like family. Ah, oh, man, I would recommend a lot of people to work here because, um... You learn a lot. You got to learn a lot about the trade. Painting is a good trade. And I think the company handles that trade really well. Because uh, they'll, they'll teach you anything that you need to know. They know. They know everything and everything to know about painting. My favorite part of working on the Albright team is the people, and the people are great. The people, the boss, you know, they're really, really cool people. Just being able to be with the guys and being around the guys, uh, and just um, pretty much getting a chance to get to know them. And work. It's a happy team, you yeah? know? You go home happy. So guys, Listen up, okay? Point here is that you have to be attractive to people. So what are some things that jump out at you just from watching that simple little minute and a half video? What words come to mind when you think of the culture there? What did you not see in that video? Okay, I'll tell you what I didn't see. I didn't see anything about come work for us because we're the best, hire us because we're the best, hey, look, we use the best products, and all this. It was about people. It was emotional. The music was there, the relationships, okay? Um, everyone they interviewed, in my old companies, you know, when, when we went through the recession in, in 2008, 
We kept our whole team together. And when we got on the other end of that, guys, I asked them, why'd you all stay with us? And they said, because of our relationships here. We like the people that we work with. Had nothing to do with paint. All right. And so many times we think um, it's just about offering a guy another dollar an hour or whatever. Listen, some crazy percentage, like 80 percent, 70, 80 percent of people that leave, they don't leave because of money. They leave because the culture blows. And I'm begging you to be the leader that you need to be. Invest in your culture, invest in your team, have those non-negotiables that we talked about. Decide what you're going to stand for. I've known Josh for so many years. And I remember when he first it, he like woke up one day and he's like, it's about happiness. And he built his culture around the word happiness. And who the heck doesn't want to be happy? Now put yourself in the shoes of somebody else who is a painter in this case, and they're looking at different job ads. They're going to the websites. They're going to their social media pages. They're seeing them in the paint store. Who the hell would you want to work for? I'll tell you what. I'd be, not, I'd be banging down the door here. What you won't see in this video, or we don't have time for today, is how he develops people as human beings. He gives them a future in the company of where they can grow and all these things because he understands the importance of these two things we talked about here, building your brand, building your culture. Tom, we got anything in the chat? Uh, we've got uh, basic, uh, no, we've got, a, we're not, not working on this stuff yet, but really want to improve in it. And, and I have to admit it, even in our, in my tech business, uh, it's definitely important and, and we, we work at it, but we need to work harder too. Guys, it's something we, we all need to do. This is how com people communicate. This is where the eyeballs are. Okay. And the final thing I'm talking about here, do you have to brag about yourself? Earlier I said, if you're not doing three posts a day, seven days a week, 21 posts minimum on social media, um, you're blowing it. Okay. You're not, you cannot oversaturate. Okay. You're not going to break the internet. Okay. So um, be your own biggest fan. Every time you walk on a job site and the job site looks clean and neat, take a picture, put it on there or shoot a video and go, you know, one of the things I love about my team is this. Okay. Um, you know, you pull up to a job site and they're addressing a problem in a certain manner, you know, how to maybe get up to a certain height or whatever, and you do a video and go, man, this was crazy. I was wondering how we we're gonna do this. I'm so proud of my team and blah, blah, blah. Guys, you're giving props, you're giving recognition, you're creating this place that your employees, your current employees love to be a part of. And back to the culture, they're going to talk about the culture and be a brand ambassador for you. Because, you know, who do we hang out with? We hang out with people who are generally like we are. So if you've got a guy in your team who's kick ass and he's a good dude and he meets your non-negotiables, chances are he hangs out with somebody that has those things. And if you're not building your brand and building an amazing culture that people have fun, they're recognized, there's high accountability, all those other things that we can talk about a little bit later, you're not bragging on those things and bragging on your people. You're Again, you're going to have a harder time building your team. All right. One, one question, Tom, was about um, how these things might apply to a smaller company in terms of hiring as well. Same exact thing. If I was a one-man show, I would be doing the exact same thing. Um, you guys, you just got to get, get a little bit creative with it. And, and this, this seems intimidating. It seems um, to some people like, oh, I can't get on video. I don't want to take pictures. I don't know what to do. Um, you can start, if you're a one-man show, let's just say I'm a home builder, I'm a one-man show, I sub everything out, and it's just me. I'm highlighting my subs, I'm answering questions. I wanna give you guys a resource for content. It's called, the book Book is called uh, They Ask You Answer. My good buddy Marcus Sheridan wrote it. He's been a, a speaker and presenter at many of my contractor fight and events and things like that. Um, every question you, are, you will ever be asked by a client, pull out your dang camera and answer the question on video. Okay. Even if you did that three times a day, hey, people always ask, you know, how long it takes to remodel a kitchen. Well, listen, you know, it depends, you know, but under this, in this situation, blah, 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 kind of show them what's going on. Hey, we're, we're pull back the curtain. The more you pull back the curtain, the more real you are with people. Okay. The more interesting you're going to be and, and you're going to get more eyeballs, more engagement and more um, clients and people knocking on your door to partner with you, work with you and things like that. Um, 
Another example would be, um, don't be afraid to be um, to be ticked off, you guys. If you know, if you're doing a um, uh, an exterior, you know, building project or whatever, siding project, and you pull off the old siding and you see how something was framed or see how something was screwed up, don't be afraid to pull that out and go, hey, uh, one of the biggest things that ticks me off is is how guys take shortcuts. You know, these people had to hire me because their house is leaking now and it's leaking because we found this on the roof or we found this or whatever. You are showing people that it's, listen, it's okay to be real. It's okay to be ticked off. It's okay to say that, yeah, there are other guys out there taking shortcuts and stuff. Okay. What you don't want to do is make this a big sales pitch about why you should hire me and come work for me. Just the consistency of this over time is going to, is going to help build your brand and again, sends the message of the type of culture that you have, that we're the type of place where we take pride in what we're doing. We do things right. We only people, we only hire people that, you know, are in it for the long haul or they're looking down the road and they're not taking shortcuts. All these things are communicated through um, social media and video and things like that. So next thing is the, you have to provide a red carpet experience. Okay. You got Clooney and his woman there in this picture. They're on the red carpet. They're on the red carpet because they're important. A lot of people grow up and go, I want to walk down that red carpet someday. Why? Because it, what it communicates that I'm really important. People should take pictures of me and give me attention. Well, imagine what that red carpet experience could look like in your business from the initial contact with a, with a, with a, a prospective employee or a sub. Okay, let's just do the initial thing right away. What does it normally look like? I mean, Tom, just you and I here, since the chat box is quiet, you know, yeah. most people go, they call and go, yeah, I'm, I'm calling to, uh, to inquire about your job. Okay, and then yeah. what's, the, what's the demeanor of the receptionist or the business owner, or whoever is talking to them? They basically, in, in a monotone voice, they're like, Okay, go ahead and head to our website and download the application and blah, blah, blah. They make it like you're going to get your a root canal. Right. Okay. <laughs> or, or hang on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so think about, not again, not just for your customers, but when people answer an ad. Um, you know, I, I have one client of mine who um, we put together a thing. It was for a sales position. And the number one thing an applicant had to do was send in a 90 second or less video uh, introducing themselves because that was going to show him some things that were important to him about non-negotiable stuff, okay, that we won't get into. But he wanted to know right away if they're afraid of the video camera, he's like, I don't want them being a salesperson for me. That person now, three, four years later, three years later now, is um, top person in his company and the girl he ended up hiring and now they're working out a deal where she's basically going to buy the company from him in the next five years. Okay. Um, because he had a unique initial contact process with people um, and it weeded out a lot of people right away. Okay. Second thing where you can roll out an initial interview or the, the red carpet experience is the initial interview. So this is where I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that we don't have more activity in the chat box here, Tom. We got some quiet thumbs or something, but I, if somebody can type in, how can you roll out the red carpet during somebody's initial interview? So say they get past your phone screening and you want to talk to them, maybe they send a video, whatever it is, and now you're going to invite them into your office. What would a red carpet experience look like? Well, at a minimum, something simple like, hey, can I get you a drink or a cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. Okay, common courtesy. Mm -hmm. What if they what if they pulled into the parking lot and there were balloons and a big sign that said "Welcome Tom"? Wow. Welcome Tom Drost. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What message does that send? Put yourself in that person's shoes. Okay. Yeah. Put yourself in that person's shoes, guys. Remember, we're we're in the attraction phase right now. We're we're winning them over. We're trying to woo them, impress them, recruit them. And we want them to feel special. Everyone's favorite topic is themselves. And I think a lot of times 
we have qualified people and we act like they show up for the interview and we go, oh shit, you're coming today. I totally forgot. Okay. Right. Right. That, that Amazing sets, impression. Yeah. It sets the tone. Another way. Okay. Now we get a little bit here into, um, into retaining people. I remember so many times way back in the day, I would hire somebody. They'd show up on their first day and Tom, I would literally be like, holy crap, I forgot he was starting today. Right. Well, now, uh, go ahead. Kristen just mentioned that uh, we're, we're family owned. So the first thing she'd do is introduce them to the whole family. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah or you can, uh, you know, absolutely introduce them to the family, make them feel special, make them feel welcome. If somebody, if Finally, when you go to hire somebody, what does day one look like? Are you mm. taking them and the whole company out to lunch to welcome the new guy? And this goes into a psychology thing here. One of people's greatest fears is the fear of the outsider, okay, across right. all societies. And so one of the things that we have to do to combat the fear of the outsider is create community, create family. So right. Your current employees, they fear the outsider because like, who's the new guy? Is he going to come in and steal my job? Is he going to be the new rock star foreman or the rock star sales guy? Mm. Okay. And then the guy who's starting on the first day, he comes in. He doesn't know everybody. He doesn't know anybody except who interviewed him. And he doesn't know everyone's inside jokes. He doesn't know the histories and things. So what does day one look like? When they walk in the door, are you handing them a bunch of company shirts, um, you know, a company jacket, some cool swag, their own business cards. Here's the iPad we got you. Normally, they start on the first day, and three weeks later, we're still waiting for a business card and a shirt. Mm. Okay? Um, day one, get, guys, this is retention. Don't mistake this. What I'm talking about here with day one, this is retention. This is number one. It's, uh, you know, our customers have buyer's remorse. Okay? Well, employees could have employment remorse. On day one, they show up. I can't, oh man, if I had a nickel for every time somebody hired somebody and they bailed after three days and they're like, he was awesome. He was a total winner. And then he just left. I don't understand why. And we start digging into it. And this, this whole red carpet experience wasn't there. Okay. So what does that day one look like? Do you have a plan of, of the week? This is how we're going to spend day one, two, three, four, five. I, I recommend the first month. Every day you map out exactly what they're going to do for the whole first month of working for you. And it might be the first day is going to be in the office and just seeing what happens behind the scenes. The next day it might be going out, riding around with a sales guy, even if the guy's a laborer. So, so he can understand what's going on. He can understand how the company works, who's who in the company and what, what's going on? Hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying here. I don't have to beat this up too much. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, that, that, that example, that's a good example of treating them like a team member and not just like, uh, you know, a uh, workhorse kind of, you know. Yep. And when you're riding around, you start asking about who they are. What kind of goals do you have in your life? Where do you want to go? How can I help you get there? Uh, one of my business partners, he you know, he asked the guy the question. The guy says, "I want to, I want to start my own business someday." So he helped him start his own business hmm. over the next three to five years. He didn't fight it. Okay, you help enough people get what they want, they're going to help you get what you want, and they're going to be more loyal to you. All right, have a plan for the future. Okay, as simple as this. And in my world, I call it the mastery ladder. Hey, if I come in as a laborer, what education do I need to have minimum to do this job? What skills do I have to have and what kind of tools? And the one thing that's not in here, what is the pay range? And I would hand this to people and I would go, here's where you're at. When you master the education skills and all this other stuff, you now qualify to move up. It is in their hands to move up. It's not in your hands. It's in their hands. And this is what this guy's going to make. And then you mm -hmm. can go to here and they can go to here if, if that's how your business is structured. But take the time to create a path. I will tell you right now, so many of us have a hard time attracting people because we don't have a clear vision of where they can go. Um, shoot, another example here, Tom, just last week, uh, a guy I know lost one of his top guys to the union, okay? Because wow. basically they had a freaking plan for the future. Right. All right, it's that simple. This is also retention, okay? 
you know, you're sinking your claws into them a little bit by saying, here's the path. This is where you can go. This is the money. And hey, you want to get out of the field someday? Here's opportunities to get out of the field. You got, you know, being a superintendent, you got, you know, sales, you know, you want to get into more technology and marketing and be our marketing guy because you like doing video and all this other stuff, then we can work towards that. But if you don't have a plan for the future for people, you're going to have a hard time making your company look attractive to others and also retain them. Right. And this also gives you a mentoring schedule, by the way, too. Hmm. Saying something there? Yeah. No, that's brilliant. All right. All right. This one always gets a lot of laughs. Check this out. I didn't know how to embed this, man, because I'm not a tech guy. <laughs> so here we are. Let me set the stage real quick. Those of you that this don't know, Nick Saban. I'm Kiyosaki, and I'm probably the best help for the buck. Oh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We are happy to announce. All right. Nick Saban makes, I don't know, 9 to $11 million a year. He's head coach of Alabama. And what yeah. do you see him doing here? He goes to some 18-year-old's living room. <laughs> I love this video for a couple reasons. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of the dang. There we are. All right. Tom, why might I love this video? Well, he's thinking out of the box, that's for sure. <laughs> it's just that uh, I, you know, you'll express that properly. I, I know it's great and cool, but I'm not sure how to express it. <laughs> so here's what it means to me, guys. Nothing, nothing to do with his job. He makes nine, ten, a million, eleven million dollars a year. Um, he understands that it's a competitive market out there with top recruits and he's not unwilling to go out there and dance. Okay. Just think about that. Yet so many of us, we don't roll out the red carpet for people. We think we're too cool or too important, too busy, whatever it is. It's below us to do some things to truly recruit somebody, to truly win them over, to truly woo them and show them like, hey, I'm all in with this, man. I want you on my team. I think in a lot of ways we're too conservative. I, I've watched too many people lose top performing people from other companies that aren't happy where they're at, not decide in the end to leave and come to another company simply because I think the attitude of the, of the, of the owner. Okay, he's not rolling out the red carpet. He's not willing to do whatever it takes to win somebody over. He's not willing to, you know, jump on an airplane and go fly somewhere and talk to the guy and meet him and take him to dinner because he's considering relocating with his wife across the country. Okay, what would a $500 plane ticket be worth to you if you got a guy who's considering relocating to where your business is and you're trying to recruit him and you flew out there? What would that mean to somebody? It would show right. that you're serious. Yeah, okay. and Mitch, Mitch offers the that A, he's investing the time in the person and, and the, you know, the biggest investment you can make in someone is their time. And that's right. time and attention is one thing we don't, we all have little of. So when you give it to somebody, it has a huge impact. Great stuff, Mitch. I appreciate that. So guys, the whole point here with the Nick Saban video and the red carpet and things like that is simply comes down to the attitude of, of us as the owner of the business. Okay, it comes down to our attitude, the way we look at this. All right, um, Art Snarzik, he's a good buddy of mine. He's the turnover terminator, helps people with hiring and all that other stuff. He's like, you know, when I started out, he was a painter, and he's like, I needed, I needed people, to, I needed painters. You know, he always talks about this. He's like, I needed painters, and yet when I'd throw an ad out there and hire people, a bunch of human beings would show up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and so. A lot of times we approach this like, I just need to hire some bodies. I just need to have some people. And then we, 
We don't understand why they don't stick with us, why they're not loyal, um, you know, why they don't reach their potential, because at the end of the day, we're simply not doing a very good at treating them like human beings. They have goals, they have dreams, they have struggles, they have family issues. And uh, if we're not willing to do a little dance now and then to attract and retain them, um, we're gonna continue to struggle. All right. Mm. 365, that's how many days there are in the year. Worst mistake, one of the worst mistakes we can make is hiring when we need to. Oh my God, I got this big job starting in three weeks. I just saw a guy post this the other day in my Facebook group. Um, I sold this big job and you know now I need to now I need to gear up. How can I find employees quickly? That's a terrible situation to be in because then you compromise. And then the pro the job that you were gonna make, you know, 50% gross profit on, you now make a, a shitty 35% gross profit on because you settled for, you know whoever you can find off the street who's not already employed and things like that. Guys, when you're hiring, three hundred have that attitude of I'm hiring 365 days a year, okay? There's two things we should do in 365 days a year, marketing and hiring. Well, I don't have positions open right now. That's okay, you're still hiring. I'm always hiring for the people that can fill those non-negotiables. You're gonna build your bench. When you have that attitude, okay, think about this. We talk about this in sales, Tom. You know, people don't buy when they're when you're ready. They buy when they're ready, right? Right. Totally. You anything you can do, everything in the world to convince a customer to buy from you, but they will never buy from you until they're ready. Well, those winners that are out there, those employees that you want, okay, those good human beings, they they will leave the company that they're at when they're ready, not when I'm ready all the time. Right. And that's why it's so important. You know, back to build your brand, build that culture, and brag about it. Build, you know, build the brand, build the culture, and brag, 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 brag. 365 in all these different places here. You, you, you develop employee ambassadors. They tell their friends about it. You know, social media posts, Facebook ads, basically, you know, a video of you going, we're at it again. We're looking for kick-ass human beings that want to come and be part of a really cool, fun company, and you show things like Josh has on his website and so they, imagine those ads and the eyeballs they get. Now you're sitting there going, well, how many of these young guys, you know, that I want to recruit are actually going to see these ads? All right. <laughs> Here's what's funny. When you are building your brand, building your culture and shoving this in people's face 365 days a year, their parents see these ads, their <laughs> wives see these ads. Their friends see these ads. Then what you do is you send these ads and these social media posts to your email list and with a, at least a monthly message saying, hey, we're at it again. We're looking at killer people to come work for us. You've had us in your house. You, you know we did our, pro, our your project. You said you loved us. Who do you know that fits with our culture that would you know you could see hanging out with us and having a good time, making a great living and building a great future? I think you'll be surprised how many of your your past customers and people in your database will actually want to help you build your team. Okay, guys, this is about, you know, as Grant Cardone says, he's speaker and coach and all this other stuff. He says the number one thing killing your business, and I believe it's the number one killing your hiring, is obscurity. People don't freaking know you exist. Mm -hmm. They don't know we exist. And you are being, all of us are being too conservative when it comes to this. There should be a hiring ad 365 days a year on Facebook. Spend three bucks a day, 365 days a year. Hiring sites, maybe not every day, but maybe every other week you post another ad. Why? Because people's lives change, okay? Social media posts, building the brand, okay? Engaging your current employees, giving them big ass bonus checks. Hey, if you bring a guy on and he lasts a year with us, you get 10 grand. Yes, 10 grand, because that 10 grand and that new employee, they're going to bring you $200,000 a year in revenue. What's 10 grand? That's nothing. Okay, stop thinking small with this stuff. Keeping them. Talked a little bit, a lot of what we've talked kind of goes in all, you know, recruiting, mentoring, and keeping. All right, right out of the gate, if you're not paying well above the industry average in your area, you're missing the boat. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. 
benefits, 401k, a gym membership, some of these other things, okay? When you have those things, that's why I have the lion there, you, you're kind of sinking your claws into them. You're making it harder to leave. And then when they have a clear future, so these things we've talked about, then when you combine that with a great culture, a lot of fun, and recognition when they kick ass, it's going to be harder for them to leave. Type in the box right now what you do on a weekly basis to recognize your team. What do you got for me, you guys? I'm literally going to wait 15 seconds for you guys to answer. Total silence. <laughs> And if it's nothing, nothing is a good response. Yeah, even if it's nothing. What do you want? Think about what you guys want. You want, where would, where would you want to work? Actually, a better question is, is would you want to work for you? Yeah, so, so far we got two. Uh, one, I got nothing, that's why I'm here, which is awesome, awesome admission. And by the way, uh, I'm doing the, I'm in the same boat. I got nothing. Uh, and, and another, unfortunately, I don't do anything. I think that's, I think why, that's why there's a lot of people here, I think. So, uh, wait, wait, we've got a, a weekly talk about the people on the team and the success of the week. That's good. Uh, meetings and lunches, another, another good uh, you know, weekly, uh, weekly, uh, process, but, but the, the weekly talk about people on the team and success, successes of the week, and then highlighting those in front of the rest of the team. Love it. So here's the deal. Recognition is huge. I look at my, I'll just take my team here in my coaching business. I, I have my team and behind the scenes, they do so many things that I have no clue. They have covered my ass so many times. Mm. And I personally believe in every business, you guys, you guys listening, you have people on your team that are doing things to cover your tail that you have no idea about. Um, in fact, I sent, I sent a gift to, to my, um, my virtual assistant a while back and I, it was a $250 Amazon gift card, and I just sent it to her. I keep in mind, I've never met her in person. She lives in Houston, virtual mm -hmm. assistant. She's been with me for three years. Um, she basically runs everything in the back end of the business. And I'm like, shoot, I haven't, I haven't done much recently. I can't imagine what she's dealing with because there's a lot of problems that never hit me. So I shot this to her, and it was a note that just said, hey, this is just because, because I guarantee you there's about 20 things that you've done to make the business better, cover my ass and such that I have no idea. So I just wanted to say thank you. Mm. Okay. Um, people will leave because they don't feel recognized. Think about the military. All right. I'm a Marine. I loved getting stuff pinned on my chest. I loved being recognized in front of my peers. So I think it's great if people are having a weekly meeting and things like that. But the more you can bring people up publicly, pat them on the back, um, and it could be simple, you guys. Doesn't it be game changing? It'd be like, hey, um, I wanted to pull Joe up here real quick. Joe, come on up. And Joe comes up and you hand him a 50. And you go, listen, the other day I was on the job site and I was, I was around the corner. You didn't see me. And I watched how you took the time and attention to make something right or clean something up or do whatever it was. And I just wanted to recognize you because, dude, um, that would have been something really easy to blow off. Guys, this comes back to would you want to work for you? And I had to look in the mirror with this many years ago. Hmm. My guys used to tell me, I want, thank God one of, my, one, one of my foremen pulled me aside one day and he said to me, are you mad at us? I said, hmm. no, why? He says, well, you always have this intense look when you show up in the job site. You walk around, you got this pissed off look, and then you leave. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm not even remotely mad at you guys. I'm just an intense person. So I had to look in the mirror and just go, all right. So I would pull up to the job site and now I put a smile on my face. I get out of the truck. I walk around. I look guys in the eye. I shake them in the hand. I thank them. 
I ask them how they're feeling. Hey, it's really hot and humid today. You drinking enough water? You guys need some drinks? Because these are just little things. And mm -hmm. you look at these and you go, oh, these, are, these aren't the big sexy things for hiring, Tom. Guys, I'm telling you, in anything, mm -hmm. investing, sales, hiring, marketing, it's the little things done consistently over time that have the biggest impact or the little things you don't do over time that have the biggest impact. And they compound in, in a good direction or a mm -hmm. bad direction. Have some fun. Okay, those all build the type of culture that people don't want to leave. Okay. Hmm. All right. Finally, here what I want to talk about, then Tom, I can open it up for any Q and A if people have some questions. Sure. We got Conor McGregor here. I don't care what you think of him, but when I think of him, I think of a guy who's his own biggest fan. And you're probably seeing a theme here today that if if you are not building that brand, if you are not building that culture and you're not bragging about it, you're missing a huge opportunity. There is no easy button to hiring. You're not going to write the magic ad that all of a sudden, you know, brings this flock of amazing people to you. I'm not saying don't hire guys like Art to write ads for you because they're very successful. Okay. But your success rate over the long haul is going to be more about you being your own biggest fan. If you don't believe you're the best damn place to work in your city for your industry, then you shouldn't own your business. If you don't believe you're the best company for people to hire, then you shouldn't own your business. So build a business that you're proud of. And I know a lot of you guys are proud of your own businesses, but you got to tell the world and brag. Be, be polarizing. Be your own biggest fan. Tell people, you see a guy who works in your trade at the lumber yard, and you're like, hey, how come he won't come work for me? Well, I'm happy where I'm at. Oh, man, you're missing the boat. We got the best thing going in our company, man. We have a lot of fun, a lot of recognition. We got a future for people. I think, it, I think you're making a massive mistake by not at least having a conversation with me. And I'm all for poaching, by the way. Okay? Mm. So... <laughs> And I don't mean go up to a guy's job site and shit like that. What I'm talking about is be your own biggest fan. If I see a guy in the store or the lumber yard or Home Depot or whatever it is, I'm going to hand him my card and go, hey, I know the trades. I know that things don't always work out. Some companies have a lot of work. Some don't. Sometimes an employer, see what I'm doing here? Sometimes an employer doesn't fulfill some promises he made to people. If you're ever disgruntled, you're ever looking to jump ship and you want to have a conversation with somebody, give me a call. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going third party. I'm putting some ideas in his head because he might be having some of those issues in his business. Okay, you combine that with all these other things that we're talking about, um, building your brand, and he sees you all over and stuff. They're going to be knocking on your doors. Okay, so guys, this hiring thing is mostly about the brand, the culture, and being your and bragging, being your own biggest fan, and it's being consistent with a lot of the things that we talked about. Here today. So, who's got some questions? Anybody in the in the question box? If you have them, we'll have a few more minutes. I, I I got a couple of big takeaways today, and um, for myself personally, um, I, I think it's really hard. I always find it hard to remember to to thank people and to you know recognize even the little things. Um, and I do appreciate them. I just don't think to, to bring them up often enough, I think. Awesome. And yeah, so, so one question um, uh, real, from real quick, Tom, real quick on that. Yeah. That's, that's really common. Like we intend on doing these things. Right. Um, and so here's what I do. Let me, let me do this for you guys real quick. This is what I do. Take this thing. Yeah. Push the button. Remind me two weeks from today to recognize the team. Right. Okay, I'll remind you. <laughs> that's, Ooh, that's what I do. I think about that's it. Scary. I, I create a reminder. R remind right. me next Tuesday to pat Joe on the back or recognize him publicly. Right. You know, and it, and it, whatever we give importance to. Yeah. Like that. We're Do I need this reminder. We're gonna okay. go. We're gonna go ahead and implement those things, or at least they'll right. be on your radar. Right. That's perfect. All right. What was the question? Uh, so, uh, being a very small business, we aren't set up to offer a lot of bells and whistles. Um, 
Sorry, I have to apologize for our massive thunderstorm. In fact, I just got a tornado warning on my uh, on my watch, so hopefully I don't croak out here. Uh, how do you weed out a lot of deadbeats, for lack of a better term? I uh, had a lot had people that hired didn't show up, and had people with uh, problems with drinking and drugs, which I'm afraid to say is where it seems very prominent in the industry. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of it is is back to those non-negotiables, first of all, and a lot of it is you you know, your interview process of which should start on their social media page, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I also would go out and I would look at their vehicle. How do they keep their vehicle? That says a lot about a person, um, you know, but by by building the brand and the culture, they're, they're kind of going to opt themselves out because you're going to be attracting the right people versus the wrong people. So another thing you could do is, is do a um, – you could do a video, um, and we do this for marketing for customers. Do a video of who's not a good fit for our company. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, a lot of us on an about page and stuff, we're all about, um, you know, this is why you should hire my company. Well, <clears throat> flip it around and go, hey, thanks for checking out our careers page on the website or social media or whatever it is. Hey, before you apply, before you call us, here's a few things. Um, that you need to know that are probably going to be deal breakers <laughs> for you. Okay. Right. And number one might be, we're really big into personal development here. If you haven't read a book or listened to a podcast or done something to make yourself a better human being in the last three months, um, you probably don't want to contact me because I'm not going to hire you. Okay. And so on, you know, what are those things that are super important to you? And you'll find that these people opt out. The other thing is, and, and guys, I know we. And this is not just the trades. Here's where the trade gets trades get a bad perspective. Like, oh, the trades, a bunch of guys that you know um, they're late to work and they drink a lot and this and that. Well, the white collar world has all those issues too. Mm. Okay, it's just hidden because they're sitting in a freaking cubicle, you know, and you're not waiting for them to show up at Mrs. Jones's house. And it honestly doesn't hurt as much in a lot of ways. Doesn't? It's not as obvious. So don't think this is just drunk guys in the trades or people with issues and being late and stuff. But again, when you are rolling out the red carpet from the first contact and their first day, um, when you have the type of culture that is fun and full of recognition and things like that, I think you're going to find that people are going to be less likely to want to be late. I don't know about you, but when I'm excited about something, I'm, I make it a priority and so that's on us to make it the type of place, to make it the type of culture that people want to be there. And then the other thing with that is the current people that you already have that are good like that, great people, when when you're strengthening that culture, they're going to bring their friends with them. They're going to reach out to the people that are like them. You know, there's, there's not an easy button. You know, people can hide their drinking problems and things like that. Um, you know, and, and we've all dealt with those things. But you can increase your odds of success by just doing some of the things that we talked about today. Yeah, I, th I think one of the most important things you mentioned today is the non-negotiable hiring items because I think that um, that can help and, and if you're doing it, if your search is 365, even though you may not need somebody at a, at a given moment, you know, you'll have, <laughs> yeah, I guess that was something really on to point since that thunder cracked just at the right That's time. You know, having having that constant search going on, you'll you may feel more comfortable turning down that person that you, you may have that gut feeling and eh, they're probably not going to meet what we really want for those non-negotiable items um, and and be able to grab that person when you know when they do come up. You know, it you know, it's kind of like common sense. They're like, you know, people say common sense isn't common. Well, this basic stuff that we're talking about here is the blocking and tackling. Mm. And most companies I've worked with and spoken to and this and that haven't even done some of the basic stuff here. And guys, you can't expect things to turn on a dime for you if you're not strong in those fundamental things. And those fundamental things start with the non-negotiables. Who, who gets the privilege of being on your team? Mm. That's really what it comes down to. And I'm not a Patriots fan, but God, you know, the culture there is do your job. Everybody that walks in that building, they know that's the mantra. That's part of the culture. That's how we roll here. 
you do your job or we send you packing. Doesn't mean we don't like you. Doesn't mean you're not a good person. But if you don't do your job, then, you know, we're, we're not going to keep you around. The other thing some people ask, it in case somebody is thinking this, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a lot of money. I can't, I can't offer, you know, some of these benefits and some of these things and this and that. Um, one of the things I did early on when I was in that situation, Tom, was I would pull my employees aside and I would go, hey, I'm a young company. Um, I'm, I'm paying you currently 25% higher than the average hourly wage in the industry in our area. Like that's what I always shoot for. I always want them to feel like money is never an issue for the, what their role is in the company. Um, but then I, I would under, I would go, what is a goal that you have in the, for yourself or your family in the next 90 days or one year or whatever it was? And I had a guy uh, a couple of years ago, it was, um, he, had, uh, he had never taken his wife to this certain bed and breakfast, okay? Yeah. And, um, and so I worked out and, and he's like, he just never had the money for it. And he, he had a lot of debt. He had some family living with him. And he had a pretty crazy situation. His wife always wanted to go to this place. And I said, well, what if we came up with a plan that if the next 90 days, if you maintain a gross profit of 52% or better, I'll buy you guys, you know, four days at the place. And he was like, I'm in. And he hit the goal. Wow. Okay. So ask them. Okay, this doesn't have to be all on you. Ask your people what they want, what's important to them. Okay, I had another employee. It was like I mentioned, it was important to him. Um, to uh, this happened to me and many other people that I work with. Uh, I had a guy that every year, or he always thought about starting his own business, and so so instead of giving him shit for it, we would mentor him and help him. And here's what happened, Tom. A beautiful thing happened because we didn't fight it. Every time we got into it, we did this about every 16 to 18 months, we'd have this conversation with him. Yeah. Um, after a couple meetings of looking what, what it takes to run a business and get leads and sales and all the insurance and this and that, every time he'd go, you know what, I'm good. I'm going to stick it out here another year. <laughs> but had we been fighting him and saying, you know, we don't want you on the team, we invested in him, we trained him. We gave them everything we wanted. And that's another big thing we could have talked about today is the training aspect. Mm. If you're not training your people towards a clear future, towards getting better, towards you know being safer and making more money, why would they stay? Right. Okay. Why would they say winners will not stay at a place, nor will they, they will come to a place. They might come, but after a while, they'll learn real quick it ain't what they thought it was. But they won't stay in a place where there's not a clear future, there's not training. Um, there's not an investment being made in them. It's just that simple. Right. For sure. Um, I don't. I don't see any more questions. I did get a not a Patriots fan. I'm going to hang up though. So. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's a Patriots fan though. Does that count? So. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, and I hear about it all the time. Um, so guys, here's my challenge for you as we wrap this up. Start with your non-negotiables. That simple. Okay, three to four, five of them, whatever it is, and make them things that are personal to you. Okay, like I shared with me, like I have to have positive people. If you're not positive, I don't want you. Okay, if you create a bunch of values or non-negotiable things that aren't you, um, it's just a mess. Okay, so simply do that and then um, and then send a message out to your current database. Do a video. Shoot a video. I, I like video. People like to watch videos. They're quicker. This and that. Send it out to your database. Post it on your Facebook page and stuff. Basically, hey, it's Tom with Tom's Dex Company. And listen, there's three huge things that are important to me as I'm building my company. It's uh, I got to be around positive people. Um, I got to have people on my team that have a monster work ethic. You know, and then whatever your third one is or whatever it is, and go. Just as simple as if you know anybody who might be in between jobs or isn't happy where they're at right now and they want to work with their hands, they want to be outside, they want to enjoy the sunshine, not be cooped up inside and they're positive and they're this and this and this, send this message to them or reply with their name or have them call at the office or whatever it is because those are the type of people that I want. If you just did those two things right now, um, you're going to be half a lap ahead of all your competitors. And it definitely has the little things that add up for sure, Tom. All right. Tom, well, I appreciate you having me again, man. Um, 
it's always a pleasure and uh, love what you guys do in an estimate rocket. And, um, you know, you add a ton of value uh, beyond just the, uh, the, the software that you guys have, man. So thanks for doing this. Uh, our pleasure and great to have you, Tom. I totally appreciate having you and, and great uh, content for everybody uh, here. And as always, as I always say, I always take something away from these too. So the, the topics are, you know, pretty universal, uh, you know, and address universal things. So again, thank you for being here and we're, I look forward to the next, uh, the next uh, presentation from you. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. And uh, we will be publishing a recording in a couple days of this on our YouTube channel. So I uh, encourage everybody to share that with uh, anyone that they think might have an interest in it. And once again, thanks everybody for attending this seminar. And uh, thank you, Tom, for presenting. Absolutely. Thanks again, Tom. You're welcome. Bye now, everybody.